What's up guys? So if you watched this video earlier and this is the second time seeing it pop up in your feed, congrats, the YouTube algorithm is working overtime for me, rare. If you haven't seen this, I just forgot to thank our channel sponsor and so I had to re-upload it. So who is our channel sponsor? Well, our channel sponsor is KAK Industry, of course, and they're making the best dang AR parts and more. I'm not gonna say who, but they do make a lot of parts for some of the companies doing 3D 2A stuff, which is awesome. Can't list the website here, but you would never ever get 10% off if you use code PSR. Don't ever do it. All right, thanks KAK for sponsoring this channel. Back to the video. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR. Woo! Thank you for watching as always. Today we are doing a review of the Soval SV06 3D printer. Now I know it's been quite some time since I did a 3D printer review and Soval actually sent me this printer months ago. I have had quite a time trying to put 3D printing content on YouTube. So it's been a bit of a challenge, but alas, here we are with another 3D printer review for you. So what is the Soval SV06 and who is it for? Well, the Soval SV06 is meant to be an introductory 3D printer that has some benefits above your average beginner basic 3D printer. It's modeled closely after the Prusa Mark III S and it shares a lot of the same kind of geometry and it's open source like the Prusa is, but it's far less pricey. The Prusa is around 650 and that is completely disassembled and it takes quite a while to assemble that. Whereas this is pretty much plug and play, almost all of it is assembled and it takes maybe 25, 30 minutes to assemble. Just put together some parts and you're ready to go. This retails for I think $299, but I found it on Amazon for $279. And occasionally they'll run sales on the Soval site for like, I think the last time I saw it, it was like $219, which is unreal for what you get with this printer. So let's talk a little bit about the features of this thing. So the SV06, the main selling point for this, and the main thing that you should take home is that it is a hot end that is all metal. So it can handle certain filaments that your average, like let's say for example, the Ender 3, the basic Ender 3, even the Ender 3 V2 cannot handle high temp filaments like nylons. It's got that all metal hot end direct drive extruder, which the Ender 3 does not have. Another benefit of having the all metal hot end is not having to deal with the PTFE replacement tubing anymore. It has a 300 degree hot end, so you can really get into those nylons if you want. I think I would recommend maybe an enclosure for some of that stuff um, if you're doing like the high stress parts, but that is the biggest feature that I would say, if you only take one thing away from it, is that the Soval SV06 is a introductory 3D printer that allows you to print hot materials like nylon and more abrasive ones, easier than any other intro 3D printer does. The other thing that's really big is the capability that this printer has to level itself, which I would say if you're a beginner and you don't wanna mess with the headache of leveling the bed yourself, which I've noticed a lot of people have that problem and that's a big barrier of entry for some people is not being able to level the bed properly. This thing does it for you and it uses 25 points. It basically automatically compensates for any kind of uh, variation in the level of the bed. So you don't have to worry about messing with it. It's just automatically uses this probe to measure the distance and you should be good to go. And it's got a PEI build plate and that is this really cool like kind of gold colored plate that you just magnetically pull it off really easily and then you just crack the print off using the bend in the metal. And that is just a really easy way to take your prints off. Even if they're like really stuck to it, it's pretty easy to take them off once you bend that build surface. So that is a very welcome feature. It also features a 32-bit mainboard and it's got auto x-axis leveling. The way that the Prusa Mark III S is, is similar to this is that it's got these dual Z gears on either side, whereas some of the other printers only have one Z gear and it just helps it stay even and makes it stronger. I also gotta say, I really do appreciate the cable management. It's just not as complicated as some of the other printers in terms of just like, there's no zip ties or anything you have to worry about. Everything's very streamlined, very simple. It's also got a resume printing feature. That's pretty standard these days, but it is an important feature if your power gets cut off or something like that. It's also got belt tensioners that are super easy to work with, with a little dial. 
no problem to adjust the belts, loosen, tighten them. It's got a micro SD slot and a micro USB slot if you want to connect your computer or, you know, just put the sliced files onto the included micro SD and you're good to go. I would say where the SV06 isn't quite as advanced is in its screen. Its screen is pretty basic. However, the way that the screen is set up allows you to use Clipper and also the screen. So it is, you know, a basic screen, but the fact that it uses this open source hardware and stuff, it just makes it a little bit more accessible, I would say. I don't really mind the simplicity of this display. So what was it like to put this thing together? Well, like I said, it was super easy, basically about like five or six steps. It comes with the gantry and then the base and you just bolt the gantry the top part to the base really easy i think it's like four bolts and then you connect the power supply if 10 is really difficult and one is not difficult at all it's like maybe a two for those of you who are intimidated by putting together a printer if you think oh i don't know how i'm going to assemble it this printer is definitely for you it's so easy the build volume of this is 220 millimeters by 220 millimeters and 250 millimeters on the Z. So it's good size. It's not a giant build volume, but it's plenty good for a lot of the stuff that we might be getting into. As far as the construction of this printer goes, it's pretty standard. It's got injection molded parts and extruded aluminum. It feels very solid. I did not feel like it was cheaply made or wobbly in any way, and that reflected itself into the printing. There were no weird movements or creaks or anything in the design. It felt very solid. So what did I print with this thing? Well, I started out with the Benchy, and when I ran the G-code, I just ran it right off of the provided micro SD card. So I really didn't do any slicing at first. I just went with the Benchy file that they had on the card and I got a pretty good result. This is my Benchy right here. It came out, I would say pretty good. I think the main thing I was noticing is that there was a little bit of stringing and for whatever reason, whenever I've done, uh, you know, direct drive extruder printers for whatever reason, whenever I've used them, it takes a little bit of dialing in to get the retraction settings to work so it's not stringing. It's just minor, very minor stringing. Here's another one that I did. Similar, just a little bit of stringing on the inside of the cockpit here. But overall, just very, very smooth, good print. Um, no real complaints other than just a little bit of stringing. So for those of you that are new to printing, you need a STL file in order to print whatever object that you want onto the 3D printer. So you take the STL file and you bring it into what's called a slicer. The slicer that I use is called Cura. It's got a profile specifically set up for this printer, which is awesome. So the latest version of Cura has this already preset into its settings, which is awesome. So I used just the base settings. And so my first file that I printed off was for a chair. So for my office chair, I made this so that it would stay in place when I do my little uh, sim racing games. I have this PSVR headset and so I put this on the chair because I don't have like that crazy of a setup. I just use this office chair and you know when I press the gas pedal, it, the chair moves back. So I put these down. Uh, I printed two of these down and, uh, and I put them down onto the chair and now it stays still when I'm goosing it and uh, giving it the beans in the VR, which is awesome. So practical usage of the 3D printer, you know, these, they work and they made my uh, my little gaming experience a little bit better. That was print number one. And when I printed it, I noticed that the support settings were not optimized. So what I ended up doing was using my print settings from my print settings video. If you haven't checked that out yet, it is on the Odyssey. So just never Google Odyssey uh, print, shoot, repeat to find that video and that will help you with your settings. I just transferred those Ender 3 settings basically to this printer and just kind of interpreted them kind of crossing over to this printer and it worked fine. The thing that I did notice was when I changed the settings, I think I set the retraction a little high. Usually direct drive extruders don't need as much retraction distance as the non-direct drive extruders do. I noticed that the printer would make a sound when it retracted because it was retracting so fast. I really changed the retraction so it was going way up into the hot end and it just kept making this noise which was not a big deal and it normally won't make that noise i changed that i made the retraction a little bit less and the noise disappeared but i thought i would mention it so as you may have seen i have a little mitsubishi jdm right hand drive k car the mitsubishi pajero mini and i wanted to make a little uh, 
keychain for it, a little logo. So I got the Mitsubishi logo on here. It'd be cool to paint it red in the colors of Mitsubishi, but printed this on the SV06, no supports or anything, came out awesome. I really do like the texture of that build plate, which is really nice. It's kind of got this, it looks almost like an injection molded part, which is cool. Another thing I printed, and you guys might be more interested in this, is this here. This is the uh, DD43X. Aves Rails makes the Rails kit for this. This is a 43X with a stipple on it. Nice, nice grip. I probably will be doing a video on this soon. As soon as I get the rails, I have a lower parts kit from Patmos. So I printed this uh, rails up, which is my preferred way to print frames. Uh, it came out really well. The supports, once I dialed them in, they, you know, the supports came off no problem. Really easy. And once I got it off the build sheet, I mean, it's, it's super easy. You just kind of bend it a little bit and the thing just comes right off. I didn't have any issues. This was the very first try. I think the bed leveling is a game changer for this thing. It just made it everything so much easier. I can't really stress enough how much that really makes it more accessible 3D printing because bed leveling can be one of those really difficult things that just is like a huge hump for people to get over and might even stop people from pursuing the hobby because it's so difficult sometimes. This just makes it so much easier. As far as the other materials go like carbon fiber nylon or glass filled nylon or you know, some of those other more exotic filaments go that require higher temperatures. I have not experimented with that yet on this printer. I would hope to do that soon. The main tough thing with nylons are that you kind of really need that chamber to be high temperature. So you really want to have it enclosed, you know, inside something. And that can be a little bit difficult. I have a Creality branded enclosure. It's just kind of like a little tent that has some like foil around it basically. So it keeps the temperature in, but maybe I'll try it with that. As far as printing with this goes, I've just used PLA with the included brass nozzle. So if you're going to print those more abrasive filaments, you'd need a hardened steel nozzle because it's going to quickly wear away your brass nozzle. So what are my conclusions on this SV06 3D printer? Well, for the price, I think it's pretty much unmatched and unbeatable. I wanna say thank you to Soval for sending this. They're not paying me or anything, but they did send it to me for free. And I took my sweet ass time making this video. It's been months and they've been asking me what's going on with it. So Soval, thanks for being patient. I think this printer is for anyone who's, you know, brand new to 3D printing and wants an easy way to get into it without too much stress or hassle, but it has room to grow. And I think that's the greatest thing about this is say you wanna just start with little trinkets and you know, you wanna be printing your sim racing wheel stops or whatever it is with PLA and PLA plus or even PLA plus Pew stuff. Maybe down the line, you wanna get more into more advanced materials like carbon fiber nylons, more exotic stuff. This is the perfect printer for that. I really didn't have any issues setting mine up. I didn't have any bed leveling issues. It was pretty much plug and play, which I think is awesome. And for the price, I think they're running a sale right now, which by the time this video comes out, I, I don't think it will still be for sale. Uh, but right now it's 219 and that's insane on their website. So I would check periodically back with Soval. It's also on Amazon. I will include a Amazon link, which is an affiliate link in the description. If you want to help support me and also want to buy this printer, it is a sub $300 printer and you get a ton of features. All the stuff that I mentioned is really great for any kind of printer, but especially for one at this price. So Soval continues to make really competitive products. I am going to be doing another review of basically a very similar printer from Creality pretty soon. And I'll let you know what I think of that. But for now, the Soval SV06 gets my thumbs up stamp of approval from PSR. I really do think this is a great value and uh, sub $300, it's pretty insane. All right, guys, that's been another episode of PSR. I know this is different than my normal content. I, I do try to still make 3D printing content. It is just a little bit more difficult these days with YouTube, but given that this is more of just like a 3D printing review, I think hopefully it'll stay up. Anyways, if you wanna support me on Patreon, the link is in the description as well as my merch. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time.